Oh, I see you. Come on, Kyber. Cross back. Good girls. Hey, kids, there's a baby over here. What? Where is it? Oh, what is this? Kyber is a snow leopard cub who, last season, as a very young cub, suffered from what's known as a swimmer syndrome. Uh -oh. <laughs> Didn't like that. Her hind legs were sprawled out to the side. We're just trying to get her leg to extend in the right direction. That necessitated about five or six weeks of really intensive daily therapy. It's always a big risk to pull any animal from its mother, especially a wild animal, but her mother is very tolerant. Maybe a little support on the back. You got it? There you go. That's pretty good. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Kyber's story has been a huge success. Oh, oh, Kyber is still housed with her mother. It's so cute. No, it's good. Keep looking at us. Kyber and K2, throughout the day, you'll see them chasing each other, which is really cute. <laughs> oh, he's playing. She's grown quite a bit. She still has that roly poly <laughs> demeanor. <laughs> it's so cute. No, it's good. Keep looking at us. I can't say. Oh, look at his feet. Look at his feet. Our visitors who see Kyber today would never know that she had this really significant physical issue as a very young cub. It's not even noticeable, and she's, you know, a, a healthy young cat now. It really is surprising to people that this was the same little tiny cub they saw, you know, with her hind legs sprawled out on either side of her. This is Rodent Chow and Dandelion Greens. Just a healthy snack. I'm going to take this to one of my favorite animals in the building. Hey, Mott. Mott Mott is a yellow belly marmot that we got from a wildlife rehabilitator in Utah. Look outside. A yellow belly marmot is a type of rodent found in the western United States. It gets a little bit colder there, so they need all the fur and like and the, and the fat. Yellow belly marmots are known for like standing up on their hind legs, like looking around, and that's how they normally eat. <laughs> so adorable the way she eats it. They like to climb a lot. Mama is shy at first. She doesn't trust everyone. Jason and her have a really special bond. Where are we going, huh? She chose me to, like, be her buddy. I don't know why. We just happened to click. <laughs> we want to use her for our ambassador program. Anyone know what Buckley is? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> Buckley is a wallaby. Ambassador animals open people's eyes to different species and different stories. A lot of the animals here at the Tractable Animal Building have come from wildlife rehabilitation centers. Mott Mott is going to be a great example of how zoos help animals that were rehabilitated and educate the public. Here you go. Can we the classroom? To become an ambassador animal, we want her to feel comfortable around the public. So Jason is bringing her into the classroom. Good girl. So she gets used to the sounds and different smells. Hi, Mott. I wouldn't have people touch her right away. Okay. You want to see what she does on the ground? Yeah, I can put it down. Yeah, see what she does. Hey, buddy, go explore. Hey, Mott. Mott, Mott, Mott. Oh, sorry, I'm not supposed to be petting her. <laughs> it's hard to not. <laughs> Mott Mott's climbing behavior is normal for her because she's a young animal. Marmots normally like to climb. I like that she climbs, but a visitor might not. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want to avoid, you know, her jumping mm -hmm. down. Yeah. 
the public, maybe they wouldn't like it. So we will probably just maybe just have her in hand the whole time we have her in the classroom. I She's just fast. Keep her in here a few more minutes, and then we'll do this a couple of times. OK. For Mop Mop, we're just going to bring her into the classroom again, maybe bring more people in, hopefully let people pet her without her getting scared. It's going to take time. We want Mop Mop to be as comfortable with other people as she is with me. Today we have one of our animal ambassador programs. So we have four animals. Oh. This is Kevin. And we're going to end with Mott. And this will be her first public presentation. Yeah. So this is like the culmination of everyone's hard work. Good girl. I am pretty excited. Mott Mott's going to be great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Success for Mott Mott would be just her looking around and not really moving much in my hand. As long as she just stays still in my hand, that's perfect. Her name is Mot Mot? Mot Mot, yeah. They found her in a horse corral, but she was too young to be like released back into the wild, so we ended up taking her. We wanted her to get healthy and be comfortable, and I think she's doing great. She's looking around at the kids. She's being relaxed in my hand, just like we've been practicing. And then what do you feed her here? So we give her kale, dandelion, yams. She likes banana, too. She does. <laughs> the nicest part about this job is to hear and see the students react to these animals. And with Mott, she's looking around. She's engaging, making eye contact. And I think she looks calm. She does. <laughs> The Bronx Zoo was able to provide a home for Mott Mott. She was non-releasable. She would have had to been euthanized. We brought her here. We took care of her medical conditions. And now she's a great addition to our Animal Ambassador Program. You guys are awesome. Thank you for helping us get her used to our programs. We gave her a second chance at life. So yeah, it's a wonderful feeling. She did really good. Good job, Mott.